Gate, reading to you the uh, message of uh, verse 6 through probably. Hear the words, uh, beginning of verse 5 actually, of Titus chapter 1. <clears throat> I left you in charge in Crete so you could complete what I left half done. Appoint leaders in every town according to my instructions. As you select them, ask, is this man well thought of? Is he committed to his wife or his children believers? Do they respect him and stay out of trouble? It's important that a church leader responsible for the affairs of God's house be looked up to, not pushy, not short-tempered, not a drunk, not a bully, not money-hungry. He must welcome people, be helpful, wise, fair, reverent, have a good grip on himself, and have a good grip on the message knowing how to use the truths to either spur people on in knowledge or stop them in their tracks if they oppose it. <clears throat> but there are a lot of rebels out there, full of loose, confusing, and deceiving talk. Those who were brought up religious and ought to know better are the worst. They got, they've got to be shut up. They're disrupting entire families with their teaching and all for the sake of a fast book. One of their own prophets said it best, the Cretans are liars from the womb, barking dogs with lazy bellies. He certainly spoke the truth. Get on them right away. Stop that diseased talk of Jewish make-believe and make a brood so they can recover a robust faith. Everything is clean to the clean-minded. Nothing is clean to dirty-minded unbelievers. They leave their dirty fingerprints on every thought and act. They say they know God, but their actions speak louder than their words. They are real creeps, disobedient, good for nothing. Bless you. As we look at this uh, pericope of text, I invite you to look at someone near you and, and tell them, don't be a disobedient, good for nothing. studying through the book of Titus and let me say on the front end that this message may not relate to everybody and everybody ain't going to get it. And the reason is because in so many ways we have watered down what it means to be a Christian to the point that, that for most folk it's just a matter of coming to a building. We even use terminology to show how much we move from the reality. Don't run in the church. Uh, act right at church. Don't cuss at church. Now, once you get off the parking lot, it's what we see. But all as long as you're in the church, you're all right. We've suggested almost that the church is the building itself. We sometimes show more concern and respect for the facility than we do for the idea of a connection with God in the first place. Come on, preacher. And so for that reason, it lays the foundation for the confusion with what it really means to be a part of the family of God in the first place. Because we are so removed from the idea of the true concept of discipleship that for some of us, we have no idea what it means to be a Christian at all. It's just a matter of coming down to a building so many hours a week and then going back home. Yeah. And so the problem is that when you talk about true discipleship and you talk about this conversation that Paul has with this preacher Titus, it becomes confusing because we're living in a world where many of us don't understand the sense of commitment and pride. We are people who are literally not committed to anything. Well, not committed to the job. You're not committed to your family, not committed to your kids, not committed to your parents, not committed to your mates, you're not committed to anything but getting a next meal for your own body. And so when you live in a world of folk who don't know what it means to commit to anything, we talk about the idea of the conversation that Paul is having with the preacher Titus, it gets confusing because if all you've ever done is saw coming down all you've ever done is saw a relationship with God based on coming to worship air nine in and going back home. You will have absolutely no idea what I'm talking about this morning. Well, 
Paul is writing to a young preacher by the name of Titus, who's actually the Greek. Titus has been sent and left actually in the city of Crete, on the, on the island rather, of Crete. There are several churches on the island of Crete. He's been left here on the island of Crete with a mission, a task he's been called to perform while he's there. And Titus, like Timothy, ain't too happy about being stuck there. I'll go back just to share this concept with you. Look at 1 Timothy uh, chapter 1 and notice uh, Timothy's wording, how Paul wrote the same ideas to Timothy, who got stuck in the city of Ephesus in 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse number 3, Paul says this, As I urge you when I went into Macedonia, remain in Ephesus, that you may charge some that they teach no other doctrine. Paul said, as I told you, I urge you, stay there and don't leave Ephesus. And, and, and Timothy, like Titus, wanted to go. Here's the little one. Well, behind, when he first got added to the family of God in this congregation, I think the first thing they had to do both was drive the bus, right? Yeah. yeah. Back in the day, when folk became a Christian, and, and, and this is just in the, when I say the day, let me go back and explain. I'm not talking about in the Bible days because it was even deeper than that. But even in, in well, the times the day, <laughs> you were added to the family of God, and somebody said to you, Would you drive the bus? And automatic, when they asked you that, brother, what did you say? Yes, sir. And many a brother initially added to the family of God. Anything they said, would you do this? Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm driving a bus. Would you help carry the money upstairs for the finance? I, I love carrying money upstairs. Will you work out on the table today? I, I'll be on the table. Will you do the prayer? I'll do the prayer. Well, we never ask them to sing, I don't think, but everything else. <laughs> but the house was asked to do. He said, yes, I'll do because often men came into the body with an understanding Anything you ask me to do, I'm here to serve. That's how he became an elder, because his commitment and pride was there. The problem we have is that for many people today, they don't act like that no more. Oh, will you drive the bus? No, I don't do it. I, I'm going to tell you no, or I'll tell you yes, and tell you fine. <laughs> Because we live in a world where now we don't think and function that way. So I want you to realize, although the mentality of our culture has changed, and the mentality of our, of, our, of, our, of our country has changed, the word of God has not changed. Amen. And so when you go back to your Bible, look in the city, and notice Paul, Paul said, Titus, I left you in Crete. I didn't ask you. Titus, would you like to go to Crete? <laughs> And then stay there and do some work for the Lord. I didn't ask Timothy, Timothy, how, how comfortable are you going to Ephesus and spending time there? He said, no, no. He said, I left you there for a mission. Yeah. So I want to ask you, address with you, here's the problem. The battle is that, the battle is that Titus was told and formed by Paul like Timothy was, don't, I want you to stay there and don't you quit. Christians don't quit. It don't matter how bad it gets. It don't matter how rough times become. Christians don't quit. Turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. I'm going to share something with you. Here in 2 Corinthians 4, hear how Paul emphasized this in the fourth chapter, uh, beginning at verse number 1, and then a glance at another one more verse. But verse 1 is, therefore, therefore, since we have this ministry, therefore, since God has given me a ministry, we have received mercy, we do not lose heart. What that means, preacher, that means we don't Quit. Yeah. Drop down verse 16, same chapter, same, same chapter. He says in verse number 16 in the very same chapter, therefore we don't lose heart. What you're saying, Paul? Paul said twice in the same chapter, as like two great book is, verse 1 and verse 16. He said, We don't quit. I don't care if everybody turn their back on you. I don't care if your family die. I don't care if you find yourself broke without a dime. I don't care if your wealth goes bad, your health and your wealth go bad. It does not matter. We don't quit. It's easy to quit if you ain't committed to nothing. <laughs> 
But if you understand, somebody died on the cross for your sins, then we don't quit. So the question today is if you understand that dynamic, how do you not quit? Wow. I mean, when things go bad, yes, in the nasty, Lord. when you find yourself in a place and like Titus and Timothy might feel like I'm here, I feel like I'm here all by myself. And next week we'll look at the Cretans, but he says inside this text, he said, there ain't nothing but a bunch of liars. Paul says to Titus, I left you in a city with a bunch of folk that, that I, I, how, how does song say? <laughs> I know you, the song that the girl sang, uh, because you... Your lips are moving, I know you lying to your... Uh-oh. Yeah, but not that part, baby, not that part. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're lying because your lips are moving. <laughs> this is my drama girl. <laughs> She's about to do a routine up here. <laughs> well, I'm about to be counsel for the day of <laughs> So Paul says that I, want you, I know I left you in a bad place. I didn't leave you in a paradise island. I left you in a bad place right now. And I understand why I left you, but I want you to realize that three components, three concepts in this first chapter that give you insight to how, how am I not supposed to get so tired? Because in ministry, when you do what God has called you to do, you can get tired. Yes. That's just a bit thing. <laughs> How long have you been teaching? Yeah. Ever since this church was built. In fact, I started teaching before the church was built. Right. Before the building was built. Before the building was built. Before the building was built. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, in, 19, in the 19, well, well, I, this, well, okay, let me just say, she's been teaching a long time. <laughs> so, but, but, but see, she is still. 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 That's why most people get up here. She said, yeah, I taught that one. <laughs> yeah. They said, well, I, 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 was, I was here. I, I'm 65. She said, I taught you too. It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> because you don't, don't quit. So how? <clears throat> in spite of, of things going wrong, in spite of the hurts and pains that life can bring, in spite of sometimes even folk in the church mistreating, in spite of all the challenges you face, how do you keep going? How do you not quit? <laughs> Tie this one and give us insight. And tell somebody, first of all, tell them, tell them, remember God is using you. <laughs> first thing in Titus chapter 1, Paul began, and I want to re re remind you of the beginning of this, of this chapter. He began in verse 1, saying, Paul, a bond servant of God and apostle. Of Jesus Christ. He says, I am, I am Paul, the bond servant. We expressed a few weeks ago that that's your tag. Yeah. 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 Paul said, I, I am Paul. I am the, the word bond servant is the Greek word doulos. It means Paul, the slave. I am Paul who belongs to God. Now, now you've got to understand this. That and we said this before, but let me re reiterate the idea that he led captivity captive, which means he led those who were controlled by sin into a relationship where they're controlled by him. See, there is no purgatory. Come on now. Amen. Amen. See, either you with God yeah. or you're not. Amen. You don't have a third option up in here. I, 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 back in, I, I've talked to folks before who said stuff like, you know, brother, brother preacher, I, uh, I, ain't, I ain't got no problem with God. He ain't got no problem with me. He do his thing. Y'all be him, bless you. And I, I do my thing. And, and it's all good. So, so, so I ain't no Christian. I ain't against God. I ain't for God. I ain't got nothing to do with it. So I just do my thing. God do his thing. And we all good. Well, one little problem with that equation. Uh, you are owned by God. You owe him already. See, 
You have never been free. And you never will be free. Either you're serving the Lord or you're serving the devil. There's no in-between line where you know, I'm not going to serve God. I'm not going to serve the devil. When I die, I, I don't plan to go to heaven. I don't want to go to hell. Give me what's left. Ain't nothing left. Either you're going to choose to be in the presence of God, a conscious decision to connect with him, or you actually, by default, have chosen to be trusting and put your confidence and your surest in the devil. So the reality is that, as he said, I want you to understand, therefore, that as a child of God, you must understand that either you're serving God or you're not serving God. And there is no in-between option. Either, either God is my Lord or the devil is my Lord, and the devil, bless your soul, the, the threefold component, it ain't just the devil you fight with. Sometimes we give the devil far too much credit. No, the devil did not make you do it. Sometimes you did it just because you wanted to. You didn't need no help. You're going to do that with or without a devil on your back. And so understand, you got a threefold battle. You fight with your flesh, you fight with the devil, and the world, the course of the world, or the world that you live in, Ephesians 2, verse 1 through 4. So because you have that threefold battle, the reality, all three of those are in the same spot together. So the way that you don't quit is, first of all, you must realize that either you are a slave of God or you're not. You either are, it's really that simple. Either you belong to the Lord or you don't. Now, if you do belong to him, he identifies the first thing I want you to realize. If I'm a part of the family of God, he establishes inside this text, the first core concept is you have, you have a tag. You, you belong to God. If you belong to God, then he has a right to expect certain things out of you. So Paul, a bond servant or a slave of God, an apostle. That's his, his ministry. That's his, his gift. We mentioned this on Wednesday night, how, how we mentioned it to make it clear. Understand this, that uh, you can't claim to love a God you've never seen. And you can't stand folks you see every day. <laughs> and, and because of that, because of that, understand, as a child, the moment uh, she's sleeping, right? She's sleeping, little sleep, little sleep. But when you're first born, where's the other one? we lost one. Okay, come here, baby. I'm uh, Mario. Come here. <laughs> so, so when you start, when you start off, <clears throat> when you start off, your first relationship is with, look at me, baby, look at me, up here, up here, up, 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 up. <laughs> Your first relationship is with the parental relationship that you have first. Now, as a baby, you're born, you begin to look up, and you don't really know anything else. All, all Amaya initially knew, the baby, she's about a year old now, all she initially knew was that the pe big people around who fed her and changed her, and, and she began to understand. It's not, and let me just say, for those young girls up in there who are mistaken sometimes, Young females misunderstand this stuff. I want a baby to love me. Oh, Lord. Babies don't love me. They need you. You want to know if you love? Let them get be 20. When you know what love is. As a child, my, my, you know, your children that love you, at eight, seven, eight, nine, I love you, mommy, I love you. They, they're taught that stuff. Yeah, when they get to be able to make their own mind up, they decide to cuss you out. I'll bless you. When you get past that stage, get past the teenage years, and they come back and say, you know what? Like Eric, like Erica told her mom and then she realized that she got grown and said, I've got responsibility. She said, you don't put that back. <laughs> <laughs> you still say that? <laughs> but the point is the idea you begin, you begin with relationship, first of all, with the adults in your life. And then, as time goes on, you start, as, as the baby even gets, she starts looking around. Now, she sees her sisters, and she laughs and smiles at them, because first comes that relationship, and then comes the relationships around her. This is, these are sisters, Stanley. baby. These are sisters together, but the reality of that is that, first of all, this one was here first, I, I think, right? And so, and, and so she knew uh, parents, but then as she had a sibling, now the sibling, she gets to know the relationship that built around her, which means that when you understand you are a part of a family, you can't operate 
as a part of a family and not deal with your siblings. If God is your father, that makes everybody else in the family a part of your family. If we all are part of your family, how are we going to act like part of your family? And what would you say if these two sisters say, I don't know that again, what's her name? <laughs> Something is wrong. If you're related to each other, you're supposed to know each other. Now, at, at times, bless their souls. <laughs> they don't always hold hands as beautifully as they're doing right now. <laughs> But the reality is that, that after the relation with God is kicked in there, you must understand there's a bond and a connection you must have if you're going to grow like God wants you to grow inside his family. You've got to get to know your brothers and your sisters. Thank you, baby. Thank you back and behave, okay? What are you trying to say, preacher? I'm trying to say that you can't grow spiritually without dealing with the rest of us. Which is why you're added to a body. You're added to a family. You can't grow and mature as God wants you to unless somehow you're allowing your relationship with God to expand beyond yourself and touch the lives of those around you. You can't be spiritually strong by yourself. And so first of all, he establishes, first of all, he established the idea that, that first of all, that, that God makes you a part of his family. You become a slave of God, but secondarily, he brought in the concept, I'm an apostle. He identifies, I have a ministry. There are things I'm supposed to be doing because I'm connected to this family. Now, some can say, Brother Hubbard, I, I've been here. I, I can't find my spot. I can't find my gift. I, I'm, but, uh, I'm, you can't sit in a seat and expect a gift to come snap you. <laughs> well, how did I find my spot? Praise the Lord. Every time we have an announcement, it's an opportunity for you to find your gift. Well, the Dexter says, look, y'all, we got some beautiful kids here. Some ain't as beautiful as others. I need some help. That's a chance to find your ministry. Yes, sir. The couples got together Friday night. I'm going to be a part of a couple's ministry. That's a chance to find your ministry. The singles got an event coming up this in the next couple weeks. I'm going to that. That's a chance to find your ministry. The C's got some things that they're going to do. They got trips coming up, things they're involved in. I, I like C's. That's a chance to find your ministry. Billy and Brown's got a plan. That's a chance to find your ministry. The worship service meet together tonight. That's a chance to find your ministry. We got mission works for taking place around the world. It's a chance to find your ministry. The only reason you can't find your place is because you ain't doing nothing. Every announcement is an opportunity to find out why God has you here. And so you can't just come and say, well, I sat there and ain't, ain't nobody grabbed me and dragged me nowhere. Ain't nobody chained me to nothing. So we're not going to chain me to something. But, 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 but the Harris points with the, with the telephone ministry, reaching out to those who visit with us. We've got others writing, writing letters every week to folks who come and visit. There's all these opportunities for you to find your place in the body. And if you don't find your place, it's because you didn't look for your place. and apostle and slave. Yeah. My relationship with God is he owns me. So, so first of all, one thing, I, one reason I can't quit, Paul would suggest to Titus, is because God is using you. God is trying to use you. And, and, and bless your soul. I, I've told you before, the worst thing in life is not to be used or to be misused. The worst thing in life is to be useless. Amen. So, so God wants to do, he brings you in the body. He wants to operate. So I can't quit because I understand that God has given me a ministry. Look at the text again, Titus chapter 1, another reason why you can't quit. In the same segment, verse, verse 1 and 2, Paul, a, a, a bond servant of God, an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith, mm -hmm. I am that according to, in connection with, in conjunction with, in, 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 in the contemplation of the faith, of God's elect, that's the church, and the, and the acknowledgement of the truth which accords with godliness. What you trying to say, Paul? Paul is saying, another reason I, I'm telling Titus, emphasizing Titus, another reason you cannot quit 
is because part of your job is to build people's faith. Now, there are people who, who I can't touch. There are folk who the elders can't touch. Deacons can't touch. Uh, sisters getting ministries can't touch. There are people only you. A word from you will build their faith. And so because of that, God establishes there are some folk, he has set things up so that when you're operating in the context of the reason he has you here, you're able to build and establish the empowerment and the faith of others. People are supposed to be stronger just because you're inside the family of God. Nobody should ever be weak or struggling or stumbling or falling because you because you are here. The whole reason God has you, he has you here for the purpose of building up and establishing the faith of others. You are here to build others faith and therefore to do that, Paul said, I sent you there, I left you there, I brought you there because you're the kind of guy I can trust to be a blessing in somebody's life. You can't, God can't use you for a blessing if he ain't trying to be one. So look at your close people. Are you blessing folk around you? Do folk run when they see you coming? Someone said this, there's two types of people. There are folk who light a room up when they walk in, and there are folk who light a room up when they walk out. So what are you creating around you? Or lives be impacted and power for you? It's never about you. God's in control. So the reality is that if I understand, if I understand that I belong to the Lord, He has a ministry, a mission, a task. So my ministry at the end of the day is supposed to empower and bless others. Planning for the vacation Bible school and the back to school uh, 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 and a, a book bag giveaway at, at the end of August. And then at the, the idea behind that is how many folk in the congregation will get involved? Can, can we find uh, 10 people to do the whole thing and everybody just come and watch? I'm sure we could. What good would that do? How many of y'all had more than one child at home and made all the kids working out? <laughs> Everybody has good, I don't know about y'all, and that's my, my grandkids, they'll tell you in a minute, no, this is a rough life, man, these people make work. And they, they, all kids have that mission, they say, why? Me, She didn't clean the kitchen. It's her day. No, that fork from yesterday validates today is your day as well. It ain't my fault you left the fork undone. An undone fork means your kitchen was not completed, therefore you got today too. <laughs> Y'all use that argument coming up? I tried it. <laughs> All I'm saying is the reality that, that, that when you understand the dynamic, everybody in your family has a work. By the same token, the reason we can't quit is because God is trying to use you. Your, your ministry is your way of building somebody else's faith. The brothers had the cookout uh, uh, on Saturday for, the, for the, uh, the cookout, and those who worked together worked for the benefit. Was it about cooking food? No. Oh, man. Everything, things you do for the Lord are not about the things you do for the Lord. Amen. Your work is not your work. If you have a visitation ministry, my job is visitation. No! Your job is to get folk to visit. You benefit the body when everybody's busy because you're working with visitation. You benefit the body because I'm over the kitchen. Well, bless you. If you're over the kitchen, we ought to have 10 more folk in the kitchen because you're over the kitchen. Amen. Your gift puts you in a place to empower others. That's the reason why we got all these guys preaching around the country and around the city. Because the job is not, my job is not just to preach, it's to preach and train preachers. There you go. There you go. And for that reason, matter of fact, Brother Willie's in, 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 in Muncie this morning. And we got, we got, we got Brother Oscar, Brother Frank, uh, Brother, Brother Bean, Brother uh, Howard, Brother Issa. These folks came through here. Amen. Most many churches inside the city, five or six churches inside the city, have preachers who are a part of Cairo. Why? Because the mission is not just to preach. 
is to do that work, but also make sure there's somebody else being empowered. I don't care if you're teaching a Bible class. I don't care if you're, if you're driving a bus. Whatever you're doing, your task is not your task. It's to consistently empower and bless more folk to be part of your ministry. That's how you build their faith. So first of all, Paul said you can't quit because God is using you. Ah, you, you miss the whole point of why you even live if you don't realize your life is about something bigger and greater than you. Who are you pouring your life into? Who knows God better because you're here? Who can say, you know, Brother so and so, she pulled me aside. I, he, he got me involved in the church. I, 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 my sister so and so, I was at home. She called me up. Honey, won't you come to the class? And got me to come to the. Honey, won't you teach a little class? And, and some folk right now can say, I teach now because somebody grabbed me a long time ago and said, Listen, honey, come do this. When I didn't see my value, God saw the value I couldn't see in myself. Because God puts people around you who are there to empower you and build your faith. And your faith can't be strong by yourself. So I'm going to worship at home and watch my TV. But you ain't, you ain't worshiping God by yourself. It's a, that's why the word church means ecclesia, the call out from group. You're not even part of the family of God unless you're connected to the people. Praise the Lord. Tell somebody you can't quit. Because God is using you. And to remember your, remember your support. We looked last week. He said in verse 5, he said, Therefore I love you in Crete, that you might put in place that was wanting ordained elders. We talked last week about three terms. The Greek terms were, I know y'all remember them, but I'll say them again. Uh, presbyteros. Say presbyteros. Presbyteros. Episcopos. Episcopos. And poimeno. Poimeno. We identify the word presbyteros. Presbyter, translated presbyter, elder. Actually, the word itself literally means bearded one. Bearded one. Now, now here's the thing. Uh, a guy wrote, I was reading something recently, he said, I was, I was traveling, he said, in an Arab nation. He said, when I was over there, I noticed that, uh, he said, I had, I had not shaved in a while, my, my head a beard, and I noticed when I walked around, folk looked at me, and I got a lot of respect, I didn't know why. He said, when I got back home, I found out that in that part of the country, they look at a long healthy beard is a sign that you lived a long time. And if it's, if, it's, if it's long and healthy, it means you're older and wiser. And if it's great, well, so. <laughs> this, if it's great, it's a sign that you really have wisdom, that you're older and mature, and you know what you're talking about, which is why I, I told the church 730, I, I think sometimes those Chinese movies, uh, uh, the karate movie, the guys with the, with the long beard, you know, yeah. I'm sorry, don't, you know, the wise guy, they really fight, but they got that long beard. <laughs> But the, but the point is the idea that it had the sense of having living longer. That's why it's called the bearded ones. The word presence literally means bearded ones, suggesting somebody older and more mature. Understand this. The reason Paul says, secondly, therefore, you can't quit, is because God has given you access to people to empower you. You have people who are, who are bearded ones. Mm -hmm. wiser people who, who walk well. We have three great men here who commit themselves and work in the capacity of an eldership and they function for the responsibility of being mature enough to help you walk through your issues. They're not here to judge you. They're here to help you be better and stronger. And so one, they're called the presbyter or the elders because it's their task, their function to be mature enough, not that they're perfect, but they walk through enough things to stand strong to give you insight. The second term we said last week, episcopos, we said it's two words, it's episcopo, scope. Scope is, to, is a, like a telescope, microscope, is to vision, to see. Epi, on top of, so it's to see over. It, it's translated bishop, overseer, but it has the idea of somebody who can, who can see over you. You need somebody to look over you. You can't be strong by yourself. And so God, God said in his, in his wisdom, I need to make sure that inside every congregation, there are people there who are taking the responsibility to look over you and help you to be strong and vibrant.
shepherd so that you don't slip through the cracks and get lost along the way. They, they have a they have a, a shepherding component to it, but there was the, the term presbyter or elder suggests that their character, but, but the word episcopal suggests their function is to help you stay connected inside the body of Christ. To help you to care for you and help you to see how you best fit in the body to keep you strong. And I told the third term, Cormano translated pastor, shepherd, has the idea of somebody with a, with a pastoring heart who, who will love you in spite of yourself. Mm -hmm. Who does not get discouraged because you had an attitude last week of trying to cuss them out or, or was mad and, and disappeared for six months. They're going to care for you and be there for you even though you don't act right half the time. Mm -hmm. So understand, Paul suggests the idea that you have, you have, you have for the sake be, you don't quit because I've allowed you to have a support system that makes you stronger. I, I found, and so therefore you emphasize, you're going to need some people like you if you're going to be strong. You're going to quit doing this all by yourself. And so what he does next of all, he gives you, some call them qualifications, I call them qualities, but he gives you a list of the kinds of qualities a person has to have. And let me say, this list of qualities is not a list of qualities just for men and, and women for men, rather, who want dysfunction inside the body. These are the kind of qualities everybody should have. It fits three categories of your life. First category, he talks about in verse 6, he says, notice the man's family. Notice his family. Nobody quite knows you. <laughs> like the family. <laughs> See, we, we, function, we function on three separate levels. We call it a public level, a family level, and an inner level. Now, most of y'all are old enough to learn how to act right in public. Yeah. And therefore, you have a tendency to come in. And, and matter of fact, it is very seldom you see folks, immature people can't handle themselves in public. So most mature people have matured to the point they, they know how to operate on a public level. Yeah. See, your public level is one thing. Your family level is something entirely different. Well, I, I, I want to know about the price. Why is it? Y'all don't ever call me to lead no prayer. I, I want to lead prayer in the church sometimes. Why can't I lead prayer? I, I, I never get to lead no prayers up in here. And your kids say, I ain't never seen my dad lead prayer at all. So you can have a great public level. But folk in your household, know what you are for real. So I want you to realize that, that, that your children and your, your grandkids, they know your real deal. You can hide among us. You can show up here and, 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 and you and y'all have, everybody here has learned how to act maturely. Having a blessed day. I am blessed and highly favored. You are going to be disappointed. <laughs> you know how to act right in public. I'm back at the house. Some folks come here yeah, look good from the parking lot. And y'all got it down to heart. Some of you left home this morning. Fussy. Amen. Got up in the car. They already get let's get going. Your wife said, told you I had to stop by this oh, we got it. But no, you're going to stay up to 3 in the morning trying to watch games and stuff on TV and not get dragged up here. So we're looking at me like you late for my life. You late because you didn't know how to go to bed last night and get up at a decent time. Don't be looking all cross out at me. I told them brothers I'd be on time. I'm sick of being late every Sunday morning. We drag it. Why we got to drag every morning? Give it all the time, all the way here, y'all fuss. <laughs> Pull up in the parking lot. I'm sick of you. I'm sick of you. I can, hey, baby, I got the head. Hey, hey, I got the head. Can't stand you. Let that sit by me. You better sit in the front of the brother. I said, uh, <laughs> Hope look at y'all say, y'all such a beautiful couple. You got a good public level. Folk in your household know the reality. So Paul, Paul says, Paul says, I want you to be aware of something. He said, check a man's family out. Something goes wrong if your kids can't stand you. You gotta be able to connect with those 
And there's nothing, there's nothing that shows your leadership like your family. Now, I'm not saying they're going to all act right. God had two kids. They both messed up, Adam and Eve. But, but he, he still blessed them and gave them what they needed to be empowered in spite of their mistakes. And by the same token, Jesus had 12 apostles. Paul, uh, Judas left him and, and, and turned them in. Uh, Peter ran off and left. All of them left at one point. But he still brought them back home. All I'm saying is that it's something about your family that gives insight to what you are. And understand this. Brother Hubbard, you don't understand. Uh, it ain't my fault. I, I married crazy. And if I married crazy, it ain't my fault that crazy act crazy. <laughs> well, it tells something about you that you pick crazy in a marriage. <laughs> <laughs> and even sister girl. I, I just wasn't thinking right at that time in my life. I was just, my mind wasn't clear, and I met that dude, and didn't know what I was thinking, and I was blinded by the light, and I don't know what had happened, but I can see it. <laughs> All I'm saying is that, that, that your family tells a lot about you. God bless you, God bless you. So, so Paul says, inside this, he said, you have the, the courage, but he says, notice the man's family, verse 6 and then verse 7 and 8. Notice his personality and his character traits. Yeah. How does he handle pressure? Matter of fact, that's the question for everybody. The question becomes, what kind of person are you? Uh, Sister Hubbard uh, officially finished her second book, and I am uh, lagging behind. <laughs> However, uh, in the book, uh, the pew, uh, 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 what, what it be, how to not get stuck with a fool. We're, we're talking about how you got to learn to look at a person's character. Amen. To the young girls up in here, I don't care how much muscle he got. Mm -hmm. right. oh, I don't care how cute he is. Well, and I, I, you know, it, it don't matter how well he can hold his pants up when he walks. <laughs> 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 look at his character. <laughs> What kind of person is he? Is, is he friendly? Is he loving? Is he mean? Is he, is, you know, is, is he, you don't understand. He, he just, his family ain't done him right, and that's why he act like that. He didn't mean to slap me. Girl, you better be running up out of there. <laughs> now, this is brief. In the book, I'm talking about what we call, if you will, the Hebrew word for food. Is you are called uh, is a mocking fool. Mm. There's some folk who mock you. Yeah. Why you gotta go to church all the time? Yeah. That don't make crazy sense. <laughs> Doesn't get it, man. Y'all money do it. Yeah, man, look, I ain't, I ain't nobody slave. I, I own my. Okay, that's a mocking fool. Yeah. When you meet a mocking fool, treat him like a fool. <laughs> Run. <laughs> <laughs> well, all I'm saying to you is there are people that you're gonna deal with. I understand that what you become in your future, look at the character and the personality of a folk you deal with. So the mean spirit, a cop of attitude, that there's some folk will fight at the drop of a dime. Get mad for nothing. I'm tired of these people, man. I'm going to go and shoot up the store. Where are my french fries? <laughs> got to be aware. Notice the character and the personality of the people that you're dealing with. Amen. And, and let's put out there. He identifies. He said, notice the devotion of God. Understand this. That, 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 that what, what you, you can't quit because there's a reason God has you. And you can't quit because you have all the support that you need. There are people here who will stand by your side and encourage you. But understand, we, can't nobody do this for you. Nobody can make you be strong. Make you come to worship the we, we ain't seen you in two years. Man. Well, y'all really care about me. Y'all to come and drag me back down here. Man, you gotta care about your soul. We love you, give you all the support that you need, but you gotta say, listen, I need some help. God bless you, God bless you. But tell somebody, you can't quit. Remember God is using you. Remember your support system. And face your enemy. Beginning in verse 10 in chapter 1, he talks about the Cretans himself and he, he describes them. You got to look how the first enemy you have is the enemy called fear. 
fear will take away every possibility of you getting what God has for you. Uh, my, my granddaughter, uh, Maria, is, is uh, we lost her again. Okay, okay. <laughs> is, 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 uh, she's a child who uh, is, is always busy doing stuff. She's a four-year-old. So what, what leaders have to do, you got to know how to deal with folks where they are. If you're, if you're a husband, briefly, if you're a husband, uh, you're over a household, you got to learn to deal with the folk in your house. Everybody is not the same. All your kids are different. And so you got to learn them. I can't, we got a one-year at the house right now, a one-year, a four-year, a 11-year, or a 18-year-old. I mean, that's, that's all, and that's all females. I'm not counting my lovely wife. She doesn't fit in the But the point is the idea that, that you're, dealing with, you're dealing with different personalities, which means that you're, to all the brothers, your first job is to learn how to read the folk in your house. What motivates them? What demotivates them? All, all kids act up, just beat them. But that don't work on everybody. I, I had to learn that the hard way. Beating on all you got to find out. Some children are motivated by fear. Some are motivated by reward. you got to learn to read your child. What will get this one to do what's best for them to do? Amen. And that's what wisdom tells you. You've got to learn how to deal with folk based on where they are. So all I'm saying is that, that, that if you're going to be empowered, these are sources that you have access to. But then he says, last but not least, he says, learn, learn your in, facial enemy. Deal with your enemy. Look at verse number, verse number 10, verse 10. Titus chapter 1 and verse 10 and follow. He says this, for, for, for there are many insubordinate, both idle talkers and deceivers, especially those of, of the circumcision. What are you trying to say, Paul? Paul said, Titus, I'm leaving you there, but there are a lot of folk up in there who are insubordinate, who got a bad attitude, who will not line up right. People come to the church believing. I've been in the world with all the crazy folk. I've been in the world with all the sinners. And you know what? I'm sick of that life. I'm going to come to God and come to the church well, I'm going to find people that love the Lord and that will love me and support me and be there for me. And I will go to the place where they're going to just do whatever the Bible says to. <laughs> and they get up in here. And we're not, everybody ain't there. There are people who are not there. So Paul said, when you find them, you're going to have to sometime address insubordinate minded people. There's some folk just stuck. Hey, if the leadership said right now, we want to ask all members of Kingsley Terrace to stay for five minutes after service. Man, I ain't standing nowhere, man. <laughs> they don't say no prayer. I'm bouncing right now. I ain't got to make no prayer. Now. That's an insubordinate attitude. The reality, if you're part of a family, if the leadership asks you to stay, you stay. All right. All right. So Paul said, if you find folk with that kind of a mentality, he said, you've got to confront them because they have a spirit that's unhealthy for the body. What a, what a, that's one reason why Titus wanted to get up out of there. Because I gotta deal with these folk inside. I gotta confront folk. So they, they're rough, they're bad. Tell somebody, look out for the insubordinate. Look out for the insubordinate. And tell them, no, Peter. No, Peter. Look at verse 15. Verse 15. He said, To the pure, all things are pure. To those who are defiled and unbelieving, nothing is pure. Even their mind and their consciences are defiled. There's some folk in the body. We, we, I, I, I love, we, we love this church. Because awesome, we got good people here. We got some of the best folk this side of heaven. We got some others too. <laughs> but the reality is, is there are pure folk. I remind the story of the guy was traveling. He left one city. He came to the man set at the edge of this town. A guy walked by him. He said, hey, man, he said, uh, I'm trying to find a place to move to. He said, what kind of town is this? The guy said, well, you know, I don't know. He said, what kind of town you came from? He said, man, I couldn't wait to leave that town. That folk was backbiting and mean-spirited, ugly mind. They got some dead stuff. Man, I tell you what, this is the worst place I ever lived in. They, got, they, got, they just said, terrible folk in that town. He said, yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. We got the same kind of folk here. 
guy kept on walking. Few, a week later, another guy came walking by the same man on the same corner of the same town. He came by. He said, hey, friend, how you doing? He said, well, fine. How you doing? He said, well, I'm, 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 I'm traveling, trying to find another place to live in. Look, look for a new city. He said, what kind of town is this? He said, same question. What kind of town you came from? He said, man, where I came from, man, I, I cried leaving that man. Folks loved me. We loved each other. We had just the best of relationships. It was, a, it was the best place to ever be in. I, I, man, it, it broke my heart to leave there. He said, well, that's amazing. We got the same kind of folk. <laughs> same time. Yeah. Wherever, whatever you find, it's based on what's in you. I had a young man came one time and said, Brother Hubbard, I, 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 he was, a, on, had been, was on probation. I'm going to leave, he said, I'm going to leave here and move to another state. He said, and, 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 and so I, I did some paperwork for him to help him make this transition. But I said to him, now when you leave, when you leave this state, you're in now. And go to another state. You, where you are now, you got in trouble, some drug issues, some, you got locked up. And they're going to allow you to move your probation from here to another state and city. I said, but don't forget this. No matter where you go, there you are. And if you are connected with drug dealers where you came from, they will find you if you open for them. Some of y'all have traveled, and, and, and you know, y'all are all good folks. I know people who travel <laughs> at the moment they got into a city, on an hour, it was getting hot. Found drugs at one hour. Don't take long. You can know where all the hot party spots are. Man, I, 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 can, I just got here. I can tell you all the spots are and how to get there. Where the church at? I've been here for five years. <laughs> I don't know why. You brought a church place? Well, I, I, I can't find it. You can't find a church? You can find a club. Find the drugs. You know where all the liquor stores are. All the strip clubs. I know where all the strip clubs are. I can't find a church. That tells us something about what's inside of you. All I'm saying is that you will find what's in you. To the pure people, pure folk will attract Pure people. If everybody around you is negative and caustic, it ain't just because folk around you like that. You got to get yourself out of that environment and connect with some folk. And when your when your thought process change, everything else in your life can change. But you can't change if you don't change how you think. You do that, God can bless you and make you better. You gotta know, and then last but not least, he warns about the defiled. You gotta know who the defiled folk are. Folk that will corrupt you before you get started. There are people who are looking for a chance to actually taint you and mess you up and make you as wicked as they are. Your challenge is to be aware that God is trying to do something with me, and I can't be what He's called me to be hanging with the wrong kind of people. And your biggest struggle right now, I just can't seem to get strong. Well, it's probably because you got weak folk around you. Amen. You gotta get around the kind of people that can help you become stronger. And there are some folk will encourage you, will push you, will drive you. When they get around you, they will make you feel inspired to be greater for the Lord. And there are some folk will drag you down. Amen. Find out who's who. And the first place start off with your leadership will help you to achieve that goal. I don't know what your challenge is, but I want you to know you can be a disobedient, good for nothing, just because when you committed yourself for the purpose that God has you here. You're here on this morning. God loves you so much. He's blessed you. You're here this morning. You're not a part of the family of God. You're not a Christian. I want to challenge you to come. You can become a Christian on this morning. God has a plan, a direction, and a guidance for your life. He's trying to set you on a course and empower you and mold you. And what you've got to do right now is decide, I'm going to surrender my will to him. The Bible is so simple. You would actually need help to misread what's required for becoming saved. The Bible says, Romans 10, 17, Romans 10, 17, says, faith comes from hearing what? The word of God. By reading the word of God, it increase your faith. Why is that important, preacher? Because you can't change how you think without listening to something different. Only God gave you insight 
to the proper way to think and handle things that happen inside your life. So first of all, you must be inspired by the Word of God to allow the Word of God to sink inside of you. Then the Bible says, Hebrews chapter 11, verse number 6, without faith it is impossible to please Him. He that comes to God must believe that He is and that He rewards those who diligently seek Him. You've got to come to the Lord with a diligent search. And so when you do that, friend, your faith will drive you to seek a closer connection with God. The Bible goes on to say in Acts chapter 17, verse number 30, you must be willing to repent. You believe, you have faith, you repent. Repentance is a change of mind. Acts 17, verse 30 says, At one time God overlooked ignorance, but now he commands all men everywhere to repent. Repentance is just a change of mind. It says no to sin and yes to God. It says no to my way. And yes, to God's way. And that mindset will make you get to the position that you stand with this audience and declare your confession that I believe that Jesus is the Christ, He's the Son of the living God. We call that a confession. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 10 and verse 32, where so whoever shall confess before men, he will also confess before my Father which is in heaven. I want you to know that you can stand this morning and make that great confession of your belief. And from that commitment of that statement, even right now, we will take your hand and assist you in becoming molded for the purpose that God has you here. The Bible says, after confessing your belief, you must be baptized. Praise the Lord, uh, Brother Dean got baptized this past week, uh, connected with the Ward family, and just, just thank God for that blessing, his decision. Uh, he was baptized on Tuesday, on Thursday, right, into the family of God because of his faith in God. Friend, in baptism, you make a conscious decision. The Bible says, you that believe it and is baptized shall be saved. With that decision right now, we'll take your hand, give God your life, we'll take you to the back, you die to your old life, we'll bury in baptism, you rise to walk in a brand new life, and then the devil will really get on your back. Because he didn't want you to leave him. And now he's going to try all he can to get you back. But he can't get you back as easily if you stay connected with members in the family to help you be strong. You must be baptized for the forgiveness of your sins. And the Bible says, Acts 2.27, he'll add you to his family, he'll add you to his church. If you're not a Christian right now, you need to come. Don't make me beg you to do what you need to do. If you are not a part of the family of God, you can come right now and we'll assist you and God add you to his family. But if you're here and you are a Christian, you belong to the Lord. And you need to find your spot. Say, look, I need prayer. I know I'm not where I need to be. There are things I need to step into. There's some things that got to change, modify. God knows that already. Yes. You're not going to shock him. Mm -hmm. But we do need you to make a decision that you're going to stand where he wants you to stand. Let him bless you even right now. Amen. You're here. If you're not a part of the family of God, I want to challenge you to come to become a Christian even right now. If you're a part of this family and somehow you've not stepped in that commitment, you've not volunteered, so just Whatever I can do, let me be a service. I want to be a service. Anytime there's a chance to be used, I'll do that. That's how you find your, that's how your place finds you inside the body. Yeah. And God will make you so powerful and so mighty. Won't you make that decision even right now as you stand and sing? Ask the Savior to help.